Shark fin is a well-loved Asian dish, and Singapore is the second largest shark fin trader behind Hong Kong. But the tides might be turning. Three local supermarkets have announced plans to cease the sale of shark fin, but many continue to consume this culinary delight. So, what's the big deal? To find out, let's talk. Starting with, on my right, we have Elden Ui, a consumer of shark fin, and on my left, we have Supanuf Bell from Saving Shark Saving Us, Ong Se Lin from Project Fin, and last but not least, Sarah Ong from WWF Singapore. So, currently there have been plans about pushing a ban for shark fin in Singapore. Um, what do you think about it, um, Bell or Se Lin? Um, I think it's an idealistic to do, but maybe it's not feasible. Because if you ban everything, is it might be difficult to implement. I would like to say. Yeah, I would have to agree with her because it's definitely idealistic. Um, but I always say that at the end of the day, the consumers um, play the biggest part because they have the choice whether to to consume shark fin or not. So um, education's the way to go. I feel. But perhaps, um, Elden, what do you think about this? Do you think that? Enforcing um, a ban legally is the right thing to do. I think it would be a bit hypocritical because if we ban shark's fin, we might as well ban the other endangered animals like uh, bluefin tuna and flower crabs and all that. Oh, speaking of which, I was actually um, looking through the WWF's um, seafood, Sustainable Seafood Guide. We actually have 18 um, species, seafood species to avoid on the avoid list. So, Sarah, um, from your perspective, do you think that um, the focus on shark's fin in particular might actually be distracting the common people from more pressing environmental issues? Definitely not. I think if you look at the purpose of the Sustainable Seafood Guide is to provide uh, education tools for consumers as well as business to refer to when we are choosing or serving seafood to know whether these species are endangered, whether they are harvested in a sustainable way. Shark is, def is on the list because we all know that um, you know many sharks are killed every year to feed our demand for shark's fin soup and uh, because if you look at the uh, status of shark now, a over 181 species is endangered. So there is a pressing need for us to protect the species and therefore um, an education tool like the guide will provide consumers uh, the right kind of information in terms of choosing the, the seafood to avoid and the right seafood to eat. Uh, recently there have been actually a ban enacted in, um, in America, in California if I'm not uh, wrong, along with Ontario and Toronto in Canada. Right. Now, a common criticism of this um, by a lot of people <coughs> is that a ban on shark's fin, in particular, is a racist attack. Um, Eldon, what do you think about this? Well, I would agree, because shark meat by itself is used in like crab sticks, as well as fish and chips in the UK. So, just to specify, shark's fin by itself is illegal, while the rest are allowed to go on. It's a bit strange. Um, Sarah, what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, let me just uh, clarify. Mm. Um, at this stage, right, actually, the unfortunately, the trade of shark fin is not illegal. Mm. Uh, it is controlled, but it's, it's not illegal. Um, there, are, there are quotas. I mean, there, there are conventions and organizations that looks at controlling the, the trade of uh, shark fin. But the difference between shark fin and shark meat is that because the cost of uh, shark fin is a lot higher, it's a price commodity. And when there's a high demand for it in this part of the world, it is the main driver for overfishing problems of the shark. Yeah. Um, I, I think that definitely there are valid concerns out there um, with, with regards to hypocrisy. But then again, I feel that Sarah has, has answered them um, adequately. So, yeah. Thank you, Elden, for sharing your view with us. We understand that it can be difficult at times. Thank you very much. Also, we'd like to thank um, Belle, Selin, from Project Fin and of course Sarah from WWF. Thank you all of you very much. We hope that this was a very good and constructive discussion.
it started out simple, a single note, a single chord. It was his boundless enthusiasm and passion for music that spurred Shun Ng on to practice tirelessly on his guitar every day. I started playing guitar um, when I was 15. I never really had formal training in guitar, but I was mentored by Dr. Kelly Tang since I, since I started music. I used to play in a band and uh, I couldn't get quite what I wanted, so I would, I would develop certain techniques. I would use my thumb to play bass lines, my fingers to play the, the other parts, and my, my palm to play the kick and the snare. And also I use a lot of ghost notes, which creates a lot of uh, percussive sounds. It's not imitating a band, it just sounds fuller. This January, Shun released his very own debut album, curiously titled Funky Thumb Stuff. It's named after a technique that I developed. I play the bass lines. So stuff like that, I have uh, worked out over the time and a lot of these techniques I use in my, my new album. Singaporean audiences are accustomed to mainstream arts culture, so this novel playing technique is unusual for most people. This album was received quite well, not so much amongst um, the, the main masses, I would say, but more amongst the musicians. Having performed at prominent events such as Singapore Youth Olympics Closing Ceremony and Montreal Guitar Show, Shun Ng is slowly but surely propelling his talent to a greater world music stage. Here are some tips for aspiring musicians. If you want support, you have to make sure you're worth supporting. What I would advise other local musicians and budding artists to do is don't be afraid of being yourself. This is Amber Shi reporting for Nanyang Spectrum. Well, that's the program for today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any comments or you simply want to know more about what you've seen on the show, we want to hear from you. Write to us at ntu.spectrum.tv at gmail.com. Also remember to like us on Facebook at, of course, facebook.com slash spectrum TV. I'm Teoman. And I'm Cynthia. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Non-Young Spectrum.